Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting and welcome to my channel today. I want to show you something that I've been hanging on to because I couldn't get rid of it, but this is just some plaid flannel fabric. And yes, it's from the J Word. A couple of years ago, I made some really cute Christmas quilts and this was the border and the binding and the backing. And I had all of these strips left over from quilting them. I mean, so, so I've cut them up and I, I just thought it's Christmas plaid flannel. I can't get rid of it. Look at this stack I have. And these are five inch squares that I've cut. They're in stacks of 10 and I've done some figuring out and you can kind of see what I have in mind behind me. I am going to make, I have enough of these to make two Christmas quilts. Now it's kind of exciting how I'm gonna make them. This was a piece that I had, and yes, it's J, It's all Jay's flannel, okay guys? But I thought this is cute and kind of goes with them. And I bought this one on a closeout so it was marked down and it was on a closeout in the clearance section. And I think I probably end up, ended up paying like $3 a yard for it. And it has snowflakes back there. It actually, I think it actually goes cuter with the plaid, but the green goes well with them. So what I've decided to do, and I sat down and did some figuring. Let me show you my figuring. That, forget this and everything else. But I'm just gonna do some Irish chain quilts and I'm gonna do them for Christmas. And it's fun because I'm using my scraps and very little of this that I think I probably totally paid. I, I got a big chunk of it, $25 for like yards and yards. So I'm gonna be able to back the quilt in that. But I will have two Christmas gifts when I'm done. And I think they're gonna be very cute quilts. Let me show you how to get started on these. So I'm just gonna sit at my sewing machine and put this together. Now, from this rough diagram, there's actually two diagrams inside because you've taken the bottom, if you take the bottom one off and this one, let me tell you what I came up with. The big block is 13 and a half inches wide and a 13 and a half inches by 13 and a half inches. And that's what you need if you're gonna be working with five inch squares, which I am. So I need from the pine tree pile, which is this pile, I need 10 nine patch blocks, okay? From the snowflake pile block, which is a little more intimidating, I need 15 nine patches. I think those are gonna work up really, really fast. By the way, the size of these quilts, the pine tree quilt is going to be 52 by 65. It's a great lap quilt, a little bit large for a lap quilt. I think it's just right in the ballpark. And the second one, this one, the snowflake and the words is going to be 65 wide by 78 long. That's a <clears throat> nice lap quilt for someone taller, like maybe me. So I am just gonna sit here and sew those up. I'm super excited to get this project done. And you know how a nine patch goes on the construction. So I am going to chain everything. The only thing I have to make sure of is, this one has words, so it's directional. I wanna make them all the same way. And on the pine tree piece of fabric, it actually is directional as well. Mm -hmm. So I have to make uh, sure that it's all directional. That's, that's all I have to do. So here I go. I'm gonna hang out in nine patch heaven.
morning. Take a look at what I've done behind me. Now, these are not, these are just pinned on the wall. Do you think it's a little dark? It's very green, but you know what they say, it's not easy being green. Oh, that's one of my favorite green lines. When you use two darks and the value is kind of the same, it's a dark quilt. And I decided I don't wanna do it a second time, you know, on the pine tree quilt. So this is what I've done. Oh, where'd it go? <clears throat> I'm going to make a quilt out of yeah, those are cute, but I'm going to do one with this in it. It's a little gray, and I really think it's going to, it'll have a totally different look. It will have a gingham look, but there's going to be the lighter value in it, and it's, I think it's going to be a little happier looking. So let me go ahead and finish piecing this quilt for you. Okay, this is a really good example of working with fabric that is not quilting fabric. I'll go ahead and link the video that I made with my brother's flannel quilt and I was using quilting fabric. But when you're working with fabric purchased from a mass marketer, you're gonna have less threads per inch and therefore, look at this, your fabric is gonna be stretchy. So that's what I'm dealing with is stretchy fabric. And I'm making my seams just a little bit wider. And as I'm going, I'm actually tugging, tugging on the fabric so that there's no puckering. I don't know if you can see this or not. But you don't want puckers and tucks in your quilt fabric. Now, one of two things, washing may have worked out, but I still think it's gonna be stretchy. So that's just a little tip. You can do a little tug here and there. This is the final seam on this quilt. It went very fast because the blocks were five inches. Then they translated into a finished block of 13 and a half inches. So it pieces together really, really fast. I am questioning my choice of fabrics. I'm not saying I'm a quilting snob, but sewing on the stretchy fabric with a lower thread count is really, it's a lot of work. We have a completed quilt top. Let me show it to you. What do you think? It's totally made from scraps from other quilts and the sale fabric that I got at Joann's. Some takeaways. Sewing on this flannel is not easy because there's so fewer threads. It is so stretchy. So the quilt's a little puffy in places. And I really think that when I quilt it, it's going to resolve all of that. I don't know quite what I'm gonna do for a back on it, but I'll figure something out. I wanna show you the next quilt that I'm going to make out of scraps. Again, I am gonna use the same plaid, which I love this plaid, but whoops, my green trees are just too dark for me. So I'm going to make a quilt that has got this third color in it, this third kind of a dove gray. I think it will look like a patchwork quilt and I'll lay it out like a gingham quilt in a very organized fashion. Let me go ahead and get that quilt laid out for you so you can see it.
what do you think? I think it looks great. I'm super excited because I had one red plaid square left over. I think I can throw that away. So I used scrap fabric and some cell fabric in these quilts. And I've got this one done. Now, let me show you something that's driving me crazy that I can see on the video. When I make one of these quilts, I call it gingham grid quilts, I would do another row of red and dark trees on the top and red and dark trees on the bottom. It Can you see how it kind of looks open with the with the gray squares on there, but I'm out of fabric. I don't think anybody's gonna notice that but me, but in my pattern that I wrote about this, I tell you to go ahead and do it that way. I think this is gonna be a really fun Christmas quilt. I'm going to go ahead and bind it in this dark uh, Christmas tree fabric. I think that will give it a nice border and it's gonna look great. All right, so. Here I am, it's a little loud because the machine's a little loud, but I want you to take a look at, it's it's really not very straight because of the inexpensive flannel that's stretchy that I use. So this is it. If I turn the light off, you can see the design better. Anyway, I'm putting this design on it and I'm using the spoon foot because it will go over seams and bumps and everything very nicely. But I think what's going to happen is the pattern will take up all of that fullness. And this is the pattern I'm using. Can you see that? Little stockings, mittens, stars, Christmas trees, ornament, and a little bird, a little cardinal with some holly. It's called Christmas Memories. So I'll give you some more of the stitching later on. day this has been but I'm pretty excited about what I've gotten done I did get this quilt finished I lied I got, I got this quilt laid out and I'm gonna go ahead and sew it tonight when things kind of calm down it won't take long it's just the little gingham grid pattern and it's Christmassy and it's falling on the floor so there let me fix that it's it's just going to be fun to have two Christmas quilts already done. And they're both made from scraps and a couple of pieces of sail fabric. And whoever gets them, I've got some people in mind, but they are going to love them, I know. I did get this one quilted. Okay, let's talk quilting designs. I did do this in a Christmas design. However, it's not really going to show. What you're going to see is just the texture, the background texture that it brings to the quilt because there's too much going on with the white words on top of this and everything. So you can probably see some quilting in there. I thought it was more fun watching a quilt than anything. I am going to bind it. I have enough leftover scraps of this. I would love to do it on the bias, but they were just really thin strips, so it won't work. But I'm gonna bind it with the red plaid, and I think it'll look really cute and pop this out. So I encourage you to dig through your stash, your scraps, and see what you can come up with to make something for Christmas that you never even thought about. And you'll be ahead like I'm ahead. Just a couple of things of housekeeping. People are starting to register for my quilt retreat. If you would like to come quilting with me on October 13th through the 16th in Albion, Idaho, it's gonna be a blast. I'd love to see you there. You can get the details or email me on my website and we'll get you all registered. If you like what you're seeing on my channel, I would love a like, a subscribe, or a thumbs up. That's how we YouTubers roll. 
So until next week, when I'm going to show you another fun Christmas project, and it'll be my last Christmas project for July. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.